Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just begin to praise the Lord together? Take a little praise break here before we start our service. We worship you, Jesus. We thank you. Yes, the burden on our heart is great, Lord. Our, our concern for the lost souls of our world, those that are lost in our city, those that are lost in our churches, those that are lost far from us, Lord, those who've gone astray, lost sons and daughters that once walked in truth. Lord, the 10,000 in our city that once, Lord, were in a Pentecostal church, Lord, that once walked before you, that once were full of your spirit, spoke in tongues as your spirit gave utterance. Lord, I praise you. You know right where they are. We thank you, God, that you're speaking to them even this very hour. We believe by faith. Faith is our substance, Lord. It's the evidence, Lord, that we need. Trusting in you, Jesus. Lord, you are my joy. Could we just begin to look upon him a little more closely? Thank you, Jesus. You are my joy. You are my peace. You are my strength. You are my song. You are my glory and the lifter of my head. And I will magnify you. I will exalt you. I will glorify you. I will give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let's sing together tonight.
just worship the Lord right now? Come on, let's just worship you. This is all about you, Lord. This is not about me. It's not about anybody else in the room, Lord. It's about you. You are holy. As we look into the heavens, Lord, we see your greatness. We see your spirit, Lord. The illumination, the brightest light we can conceive. The last song. prayer. That's normally what we do here. We're going to do that. But I just feel in my spirit that there's no point in praying if we do not see Him. There's no point in petitioning Him if we don't have faith to mix with our prayer, with our petition. Prayer needs faith mixed with the petition. Amen. Can we just one more time, just want you to think about His goodness. Think about His grace. If you're struggling with joy, you're struggling with your faith, lift up your eyes. Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. He's the beginning, the completion, the author and finisher of faith. Lord, we look to you right now. Our heart is stirred within us. Who are we that we should be in your presence on holy ground? You're wonderful in all your ways. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. you. May be seated tonight. I wonder if there's anybody that has a testimony tonight of God's goodness in their life. Amen, sis. <laughs> yeah, well, that's beautiful. Thank you, sis. Someone else tonight, you'd like to share a testimony and tell about God's goodness? Thank you, Marie. Go ahead. Yeah, so go for it. That's excellent. Every moment counts. That's right. Yeah, we're not living the past or the future. Live in this moment. How many of you want to do that? Amen. You want to live in each moment. Each moment is a gift. Amen. Live in each moment. We don't have to worry about the past or the future today. Right now is enough. Amen. 
Amen. Anybody else tonight? Wow, we're having some good testimony. You're encouraging me. Amen. I'm doing this before we pray just to kind of encourage you so that we can pray with faith tonight. Anybody else? Something you want to share, something God's done. Go right ahead, Fritz. We're, I thought you just being here was a testimony, to be honest, but go ahead. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Thank you, Fritz. Amen. You know, I was thinking about you all day. I'm so glad you came tonight. I was like, Lord, wouldn't it be nice if Fritz came tonight? <laughs> and there he is. An answer to you are an answer to prayer in every way. Amen. Right there. Isn't that awesome? Amen. We love you around here. Somebody else? Anybody else have something that they want to share? Something that's on your heart? If you're prompted, don't hesitate now. Come on, let's don't be shy. Amen. <laughs> Anyone? Yes, go ahead, Cass. <laughs> there, we would love for you to stand up and give your testimony. You go. Yes. Wow. Yeah. God is guiding her through her art and everything she does. Isn't that awesome? Do you feel that way that God guides you? I hope He does. Amen. Amen. Go right ahead, Sister Leah. <laughs> That's quite the place, isn't it? God's doing it. Amen. That seed. Amen. I just feel like we need to pray for people that, wow, you guys have been such an encouragement to me. Because if God is leading Cass everywhere, that means everywhere she goes, she's ministering to people, even through her art. And that means, Marie, when every time you're on the phone with somebody, you're ministering to them, whether they know it or not. And whether you're in Tim Hortons or you're in the hospital or you're just wherever you are at the mall, right? Amen. God is with us. You know, this is what I've been praying for for our church. I don't know about you, but I've been praying and praying and praying. God would open up doors for all of us everywhere we go. How many of you have that same desire? God, open doors. And if there's no door open, open a window. If there's no window open, remove the roof. Amen. Amen. So give us an opening somehow. Amen. Could we pray right now for those, those seeds we planted this past week? Let's pray for this young man that was with us today. Was it Manish? Is that correct? Did I get that right? What's that? 
Manish. Amen. Uh, the reason I'm asking it is because we have a lady, young woman at the college, Manisha. So <laughs> I was like, well, that's kind of strange that they have the same first part. And I just wanted to make sure I was saying it right. And uh, let's pray for all the people that have been connected to us, VP, others that have been blessing to us. Let's pray for all, everything, every door that would be opened. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you've done in our lives this week. The seeds that have been sown. Some have been, Lord, very direct. Some have been indirect. Some, Lord, just as in our influence. And I was thinking as Sister Joanne stood today that she carries around her a presence of God. I know that Leah does too. And, Lord, I know that every, in fact, I believe that all of us that are spirit-filled, Lord, and those of us that are seeking God to carry with us a, in a, mar- a presence around us, Lord. And I've been around people, Lord, that have that presence, God. I pray everywhere we go that presence would, Lord, make people aware and their spirit would be awakened, Lord. There will be an awareness of the sacred and of the holy. That the light that is in us, Lord, that's not under a basket, our light is not hid, Lord, except to those that are lost. And God, I pray you would open their eyes that they would see and their ears that they would hear. Receive the word of the Lord. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you encourage me tonight? Is there any prayer requests tonight? Come on in, David. We just had, you missed the testimonies, man. We had a good time. Somebody else? Sister, you got a, a request? Okay. 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 We're going to pray for these four needs. I'm remembering Weldon, Monique, and Allison. I'm missing one. Dale. Dale and Byron. Oh, so more than that. Okay. Okay, we're going to pray for these needs right now. Would you join with me? We'll we'll give you more opportunities to pray more in just a moment. Heavenly Father, we come before you. Lord, we pray for Weldon and Anderson family. Lord, of the loss, Lord Jesus, that you would be surround them and comfort them. Many of us have experienced the loss of loans that we love. And God, I pray you would strengthen them and encourage them during this time. Pray for Monique, Lord, the situation there. You know exactly what's going on, the health challenges that perhaps are there. You would strengthen, Lord. Same thing with Allison, Lord, and Dale today. Lord Jesus, you are with them. Lord, encourage their spirit. May they lay hold upon the promises of your word. May they look to you, Lord, not to their problem. May they live, Lord, in the moment that they have, Lord, as we heard a moment, just a a little bit ago, Lord Jesus. We want to, Lord, help them to be aware. It only takes one touch, one word from the Master. God, and you are able to touch. You're able to touch Byron, Lord Jesus. And uh, Lord Jesus, you are able to be their strength and their song. You're able to be their source of life. Lord, we're connecting to them through our spirit. We feel the flow of your spirit, Lord. These are not just names to us, but we're standing, Lord, because of our love, because of our care for people and for their needs and for their burdens and for their families and for the prayers that have been brought up before you, O God. Lord, you're not far from us. Lord, you're not far from them. You're with them. Lord, bring that moment of spark, that moment of faith, that moment of assurance. So in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Someone else here tonight. Let's remember for dinner for Billings, her family. The Connors, yes. Connors, Iva, and 
course will, Mom. Okay. And Stephen. Okay, well, there's several right there. Let's pray for these right now. Heavenly Father, they're not just names to us. They're people that we love and care about. They're people that we hold close to our hearts. I pray for the Jennifer Billings family. Lord, you would work out this court case situation. You would overshadow them and help them. Lord, people that reach out to us because they believe that we touch you. Well, God, we don't want to disappoint them, Lord. And we don't want, Lord Jesus, to go, Lord, without touching you on their behalf. Be with the Billings family, Lord. Strengthen them and comfort them. And help them to come, Lord Jesus, to, to find you and to find your strength. I pray, Lord Jesus, for June and for Irvin tonight. You would strengthen their bodies and strengthen their souls. God, you know their situations. You know their burdens and their cares. You know their needs, Lord. You're well able to strengthen them. We rebuke inflammation. We rebuke infirmity. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. Oh, would anybody agree with me? We believe the blood of Jesus has the power to cleanse and heal, even this very moment, Lord. And it doesn't matter how many times we've asked. We keep coming. We're not letting go, Lord, until we receive an assurance from you, Lord God, that we have received our need. We pray for Iva, Lord, her weakness, Lord, her uh, struggle with breathing, Lord, and her family, Lord. I pray you would bring strength to them, spiritual, physical, Lord. I pray in every way, Lord, you would strengthen and empower. According to your power that works in us and through us, we pray for Wilma tonight, Lord. Lord, it's so much weariness. There's so much pain there. And God, you were the one who took, stepped up and took our place. Oh, God, it's not your will that your people should be infirmed. God, I pray, Lord, let there be a loosing of faith, a loosing of confidence. Lord, a loosing, Lord. We bind any mindset, Lord, anything that would hinder the flow of your spirit. Let the spirit of the conqueror and the more than the conqueror, Lord, fill every heart and mind. I pray for Dalton tonight, Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, for Stephen tonight, Lord. Lord, they are not far from you. Lord, we may think that people are far from you, but often they're just, just one, Lord, 180 degree turn. Just, Lord, just a turning towards you would be all that was necessary for you to do a work in their lives. Lord, for you to bring restoration and healing. You think, Lord, grant them the strength and the vision and the understanding they need. We pray these things in your name, Jesus. Jesus. Oh, the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people, of a righteous person accomplishes much, avails much. Amen. I believe that tonight. That's why we confess our faults when we're there, so that we may be healed. Is there anybody else here tonight that has a, a request? Amen. We're working our way through it. Why not? family okay so let's remember Chad tonight let's remember the, his girlfriends and her family especially this 15 year old wow anybody else tonight in fact I don't is it okay if we just pray for this one need I hope you don't mind Heavenly Father we don't know them but you do you were there before they were even conceived and you love them or before they were ever took their first breath. You were there with Chad. You were there with his girlfriend, Lord. You were there with her son. God, this world is full of people that are suffering and hurting just like Chad. God, we are the church, and our heart is moved with compassion. For the Lord, they're like sheep without a shepherd. How many, Lord, are lost? How many have once walked in truth, and Lord, now they're connecting to people and Lord Jesus, they're not sharing the light that they once knew. Oh God, I pray. Lord, don't let grief overtake them, but let there be transformation. Let there be, Lord, a turning towards you. 
Lord, we cannot bring back the dead, Lord, in this situation. But God, we can pray that the dead would come to life again that are still alive and breathing. They would come alive in the Spirit. Strengthen them, we pray. We're not in any way trying to spiritualize, Lord. We're sincerely wanting them to be brought back home, to be restored. And Lord, we don't know how you can work through this situation, but you are so powerful and so mighty that there be an awareness of you, oh God, a turning to you, a humility, Lord God, in this situation. Let there be, Lord, a Lord, an awareness of your presence. If anybody in this situation would cry out to you, I pray, God, you would be right there in that moment that they would feel your touch and your presence. Feel your grace, not because we deserve it, for none of us deserve it, but simply because you are merciful and you are gracious and your goodness follows us, follows us every day of our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anybody else that has a need? Just raise your hand. Maybe you don't feel to share it. You've got an unsaved loved one. Anybody have unsaved loved ones? I do. I think of my aunt and my uncle, and I think of my cousins. And Lord Jesus, some of them in this province, some in the states. My son, amen. Can we just lift our hands to the Lord, all of us, if you are willing and able? Would you lift your hands and surrender? Lord, we give our, our lost families and friends and neighbors, those who walk with us, into your hand. Lord, we're in harvest time. It's harvest time. It's your desire, Lord. Lord, that people will be brought home. God, help us, Lord Jesus. As we are laborers in the harvest field, thank you for hearing our prayers tonight as we've labored, Lord, in our prayers to make a difference, to open doors, to heal hearts, to heal bodies through what your spirit can do. It's not us, but Christ that moves through us and in us, Lord Jesus. For you said to ask, you said to seek, and you said to knock. And so we've done that here tonight according to your will and according to your power. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Would you clap your hands? Let the sound of chains falling ring in the house tonight. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to his name. Ita la sore la mandala. Nela masore la. Woo, hallelujah. I don't know if your wood's wet or your fire's burning, but I hope it's I hope it's one or the other, not lukewarm. Amen. Amen. What a powerful presence of the Lord in this place tonight. I feel chains falling. Mm. If my people called by my name will humble themselves and pray seek my face turn from their wicked ways anybody know the rest then will I hear from heaven forgive their sins and heal their land does our land need healing do we need forgiveness do we need God to hear our prayers hallelujah Oh, we humble ourselves and pray and seek your face and turn from anything wicked. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Just a few reminders, of course, uh, starting this Tuesday night. We have small group, of course. I encourage you, if you can, to join your small group. If you're not part of one, join us. There's one here. There's one in several homes. So, Altina leads one up. Andrew leads one up. Laura leads one up. Amen. We're looking forward to what God's going to do this week. If you want to join us on campus at uh, UNB Student Union Building downstairs, come get some coffee or tea, a donut or cookie. Join us to talk about the Lord uh, if you wish. Of course, it's primarily for students, but you're welcome to join us if you'd like something let's not forget of course this coming Saturday night something's going on here what's going on here prayers going on here excellent so six o'clock if you'd like to join us we would love to have you and if you can't join us maybe you would make a commitment that even if you can't be here for whatever reason that you will make an effort to pray sometime Saturday night before you go to bed amen I really believe it's important that we all be unified even if something keeps you from here, let's all have the same mind. Because as far as God is concerned, Sunday begins when? Sundown on Saturday. What a difference that would make if we started treating sun Saturday night like Sunday morning. Amen. Like the evening of Sunday. Wouldn't that be great? We would be all prepared and ready. I've seen it happen. I've seen what prayer on Saturday nights can do to us on Sunday. So let's look forward to what God is going to do in us and through us. Of course, it's not just Saturday nights that we pray. We encourage you to pray uh, frequently. Um, I'm, I'm debating whether or not to encourage everyone. I don't see why I couldn't. Let's see if we eat together, and maybe you don't eat together with your family very much, but if you eat together for supper, or for, I guess we call it, we call it supper around here, right? Not dinner. Um, if we eat together for our evening meal, how about that? Um, that you would take even maybe five or ten minutes afterwards just to, to um, just pray. Pray for our city. Pray for lost loved ones this month. Um, pray for people that don't have a pastor. People that don't have a shepherd. That's what I was thinking of when we talked about it. And let's not forget, we're in the last quarter of the year. Three months left. How you doing? Any Bible studies this year? Any souls won? Not putting any pressure on you, ha ha ha! But I'm just encouraging you. Let's let's find a way to make a difference. The last part of 2023. I really don't feel like we have a whole lot of time left, and uh, maybe I'm feeling that more because of what's going on at the Bible College. But I really do feel like we need to be very aware of our times and seasons, and. Uh, so I encourage you to do that. Uh, also, there's some things on the bulletin board. Look in the bulletin. If you've got any questions, you come talk to us. We would love to be of any service that we can. Amen. What's our theme this year? 
get, give, go. Amen. G to the third power. Amen. We believe in power. Uh, my big idea tonight, very simply, is how to get, give, and go on purpose. Get, give, and go on purpose. Um, man, I'm going to wish, well, I had put, put my chair, set my chair up. Ah, there's a good man right there. I meant to do that, and then I got carried away. Forgot. So, thank you, my brother. Amen. Well, if you have your Bibles, won't we turn to Proverbs 21.5? Brother Conrad, perhaps, do you have a Bible with you there, bro? Um, it'll be on the over it anyway. The Proverbs, ones, yeah, we, we'll do some discussion. Um, so we'll have mics on either side for those of you that would like to respond. And we do encourage you because we don't know who might be online that you might encourage. Uh, you might have some point. I know that we've been having some amazing discussions and uh, we won't probably get as much opportunity to discuss things. Uh, we're starting an evening series. Uh, we're starting Commit, which is part of our life series, our life lessons. And so we encourage you both here and at home. Uh, we want to really, we're going to be really talking about how we go to a level of commitment that we've not been to before. And why would we want to do that? Because if we go to another level of commitment, God will go to another level of commitment too. Go to another level of blessing. And so, but tonight I want to talk a little bit about how to get, give, and go on purpose. Say with me, on purpose. On purpose. On purpose. Some of you aren't up here on purpose. On purpose. On purpose. Thank you. Uh, not by accident, not by happenstance, not by chance or time, but just because we have a purpose. We want to get, give, and go on purpose. And so we're going to talk a little bit about this. Now, we've done this before, so before we leave here tonight, I don't want to turn you off. I know some of you. Um, we want to be aware that we're going to talk about uh, an assessment. So I want you to be thinking about this. Uh, several of, I just did it a couple weeks ago myself, redid my personal assessment. I usually do it several times a year. Um, and just to be clear, um, let's ask a question here tonight to get started. Why do you think I think of September and October as the beginning of the church year? Anybody? You want to take a guess? Why do I consider that the beginning of the church year? School's back in. Yeah. What else? Summer's, summers. Yeah. Summer's a break. Exactly. So that's why. Does that make sense? Anybody else? Want to, does that make sense? What I've noticed is, is that we start settling down about this time of the year and we start getting serious at work. We get serious at fixing our stuff at our houses. We start, you know, the winter's coming and whatever. It's like we start zoning back in. It's like we've been zoned out during the summer <laughs> and now we're kind of getting back into focus. And, uh, you know, there's an awareness. I mean, uh, around here, I'm hearing chainsaws going and all kinds of stuff because people know if they don't get it done, it's not going to get done, right? We've got a few more weeks, maybe a month or two of decent weather, and then it's going to be, we don't know what we're into, right? We don't know yet. So it's a good time. I've also, and I noticed that even in the States when we were in Oklahoma, I noticed that when we were, and so I began to learn, I started to realize that there, there's, there's, there's are seasons, there's seasons, there's rhythms, there's rhythms. And so even though, even though in the natural, this is the fall and harvest time. Really for us, this is a good time to sow, right? Now, if you're in the south, you actually might sow seed and have a winter harvest. So that's interesting. But we also know that for humans, there's no specific time of the year when, you, you know, there's procreation, right? We know that there's not a specific time of the year. And so as human beings, this is a very good time when people come back together and start getting serious. They start thinking about what's going on at their school, they start thinking about what's going on at colleges. They start waking up and realizing, hmm, maybe we get some things we need to kind of focus in on here. Um, same things with, it's a good time to refocus. And so with that in mind, it sounds like a strange time of the year. Instead of December, January 1st when we tend to make our uh, commitments and try to figure out some things that we want to do. But I think for the church, we should maybe be a little more proactive. I really do. I think this is a great time for us to take a look at ourselves and say, okay, what do we want to do with the last part of this year? Because, hey, it's pretty cool. year's not over yet. This is a good time to say, okay, what kind of person do I want to be? What do I want to invest? For example, right now, and I'm getting ready hopefully to do this in the next few weeks, we'll bring some soul in here. Brother Glenn Harrington has already got some soul sitting over there. Hopefully he's going to help me fill it in, and I'm going to put some seed down. Why? Because a good time to put grass seed down is in the fall. And that'll come up in the spring. And so there's truth for that. 
I think there's a lot of truth for that in the natural. There's also truth for that in the spiritual. So let's just take a little bit of look at how do we get give and go on purpose for the next three months and hopefully to get us into the next year. Let's take a little bit of look at this concept. I know we've talked about it before, but the reality is if we don't plan for it, it won't happen. If you don't have a vision, let's look at this. And that's one of the scriptures we're going to read tonight. Proverbs 21.5, the plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. But those of everyone who is hasty, surely to poverty. Is that what you've got there, brother? Close. Okay, it's close. What do you have? you got K- KJV? The says, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plentiness, but of everyone that is hasty, only to want. Only to want, or poverty, or need, right? So there's a powerful concept behind diligence. Now, listen, some of us have personalities that are not so good at consistency and and i'm not saying you're one of those i'm just saying whether we do or don't this is an area where we have to be called faithful and we thought we're started talking about a little bit about stewardship this morning it's required in a steward that they be found faithful and so uh, there's a faithfulness there's a diligence that's required uh, most of us if we have a job you have to be faithful if you're inconsistent at your job pretty soon you don't have a job Right? Um, you need to show up when it's time to show up. And you need to be faithful. You need to put in your best effort. And the Bible even teaches us that when we work for other people, we're to do it as unto who? The Lord. So then it's, it's not only a, a thing about how good your boss is, but how good God is. And so we serve the Lord. We don't serve people so much, although we do serve them. But the point is that we have a higher purpose and a higher calling. And so we remember that. So the, di- the plans of the diligent lead to plenty. So when we have purpose, it leads to plenty. When we seek to fulfill our purpose, when we're diligent in fulfilling our purpose, it leads to plenty. But those who are hasty or those who are quick to act, or those who um, maybe at the last minute try to study for the exam, uh, last minute, no, no, no. Last minute, write the, the, the essay or those of us that are <laughs> waiting to the last minute to uh, put together the meal or whatever the case may be, whatever it is in your daily life that you're trying to be diligent in, um, it's kind of hard to make up. It's going to be very difficult to make up for not being prepared for heaven. I'll just tell you that. The Bible says he's going to come as a thief in the night. There's no way to cram for that test. You're either going to be ready or not. And Jesus even said it in the hour that you think not. So here's the thing. If we're not busy, if we don't have a purpose, how in the world is he going to say, well done, good and faithful servant? So it's a kind of a serious deal. I, I'm not trying to drag anybody down today. I'm being very practical here tonight. Um, this, is, this is the reality. If we're not about the Father's business, then whose business are we being about? That's an actual question, by the way. Anybody want to jump in here? In our own kingdom. Uh, the, I'll just be honest with you, the thing that we've been uh, within, I told you this before, I felt like the Lord had given us dominion over the city and over the province. First nine months we were here. So what have I been fighting for the last eight and a half years? Anybody want to guess? The kingdom of man. We have a very strong will. Us Canadians, we may act all nice, but the truth is we're stubborn as mules. <laughs> right? <laughs> I, I read one time, this really blew my mind. He was like, you know, how people get up in each other's faces and, you know, shout and stuff in the States here in Canada. You know how a Canadian throws a fit? He sees that you didn't clean off the snow off your back rear bumper and he can't see your light. So when you're at the stoplight, he gets out and brushes off the snow from your bumper. That's how he throws a fit. That's how Canadians throw that they, they're not too happy with you. Right? It's very... <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a Canadian. A little passive aggressive there, aren't we? Um, but the reality is <laughs> we need to be careful because hasty doesn't make leads. As haste leads to, anybody know what that old saying says? Haste leads to waste. That's right. And so oftentimes um, a lot of energy gets lost because we're not being diligent. And, and it, the Bible is very clear here. Whoever is hasty trying to get a quick work done, it's going to lead to poverty. That's how you lose a lot of seed. You start trying to plant your garden too late in the season, the spring. 
you're going to have one of the issues that we have out there right now. We've got some green peppers that are just, just about the size of our fist rather than the full size. Good thing is we can put them in a pot and save them for next summer. So we're going to do that. I think we'll see. I, I, I went online and found out they can last for five or six years. So that's really cool. I did not know that. So um, we'll have our green peppers by hopefully the, toward the end of Matt next summer. And so, but you have to know these things, right? You wouldn't know that if you weren't diligent and did the research and found stuff. And so there's powerful principles in life that we can apply to the word. And of course, Proverbs is from Solomon, the wisest man that ever lived. And he's very clear here. Plans of the diligent lead surely to plenty. So my, my questions are for us tonight. What are some of your plans? Do you know your purpose? Why are you here? Why do you exist? You know, there's a lot of people in our world that don't know why they're on the planet. Does anybody want to share one of their thoughts about why we exist? God's will. God's will no question. But why was it God's will, Cass? What do you think? Why did he decide, I'm going to make people? What is your thought? To have relationships. Boy, you good. God, but look, <laughs> my, my wife's like, yes, yes, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> She's, seriously, when you're when someone that you're helping and teaching uh, share something like that, that's exactly right, uh, right? Someone else, and that's that's certainly true. Someone else, what are, what is our purpose for existing? Relationship, yes. Anybody else? There's more than that. Obviously, that may be the highest one, but there's others. To love God by choice. Learn to love God. Learn to love others. Isn't that what Jesus said? This is the whole. All the law and prophets hang on two things. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbors yourself. Anybody else? What is your purpose? Okay, so we say that at church. How did you live this past week? Was that your purpose this past week? Loving people? Ah! Now there's a question for you. If you go back through the week, it might have been about school. It might have been about my business. It might have been about my kids or my family. It might have been about moving tomorrow. <laughs> right? And I'm not saying those things are wrong. Those are part of life. But here's the thing that we really have to be careful of. It can be so easy to get caught up in the mundane day-to-day -day life that we lose the moments that are precious. We lose the opportunity to realize what I do right now needs to line up with my ultimate purpose, which is to love God, to love people, to go to heaven, that kind of a big deal, that's not going to happen by accident. You know, there's nobody going to get in heaven going, how did I get here? What's this? Streets of gold? I didn't even know there was such a thing. Right? It's not going to happen by accident. There are going to be people in hell, though, going, I don't know how I ended up here. What happened? How did I get here? You see, the thing is, there's a narrow way, it's a straight way, and it goes upward. And the Bible says it's not an easy way. Few find it. So here's the deal. If we're going to get to heaven, it's going to be on purpose. You have to get to get to heaven. You have to get a hold of your purpose. You have to get a hold of it. You can't just wait for it to show up. I want, if you don't have your purpose and a clear purpose for yourself, what you're supposed to do with the season of life you're in. Some of us are older. Some of us are younger. Some of us have perhaps some infirmities, right? We have some challenges. But rather, whatever we have and are going on in our lives, we need to be saying, God, how does this fit with your purpose in the earth? How do I fit in with your body in the earth? What's my part to play? And how do I replicate my gifts and calling into someone else? You see, we're not only to love God and follow him, but we're also to create disciples, to go and make disciples. And so this is your purpose. How do I know that? Because if you love God, he's given us a commandment. To go into all the world and preach the gospel, right? Making disciples, teaching them to observe the laws that he gave us, teaching them. All of us are called to teach. We are. We're teaching people all the time by our actions, whether we speak a word or not, right? <laughs> if you've ever been a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You can say, do as I say, not as I do, and, but that didn't work, Right? Aren't you glad Jesus didn't do it that way? He said, do as I do, not as I say, right? 
Jesus is an example, not only of speaking, but also doing. Let's look here at Proverbs 29, verse 18. Maybe someone, somebody have a mic? Maybe they could jump in there and read it for us. Oh, you can go ahead. Go ahead. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but happy is he who keeps the law. Now, this is often quoted uh, as, without a vision, the people perish, right? Because that's the King James Version. And there's nothing wrong with that, but that's, here's, here's the interesting thing. We oftentimes don't read the rest of it. It's really interesting where there's no revelation, the people cast off restraint, or they perish. In other words, they perish because they don't have anything to guide them. It's like people, without knowing the rules of the road, just jump in a car. It's like a, a five-year-old who gets in the car and thinks he can just drive the car wherever he wants to go. That's probably not a good plan. It's someone that doesn't realize that, that it's a beautiful, beautiful, wide way out there. But have you ever seen a dead animal on the side of the road? They don't know. They don't know restraint. They don't know that there's barriers. There should be lines. They don't understand not to cross the road, right? And it's sad. It's sad. I've seen quite a few road kills lately. But they don't know. They don't know the laws of man. They don't recognize it. And here's the thing. There's a lot of people that don't know the laws of God, too. And guess what? Ignorance won't stop you from being dead. See, a lot of people like to think, well, if I just don't know what God wants, he's going to be gracious to me. Well, maybe, but deciding which level of hell of ignorance you're going to be in doesn't change the fact that there's only one way to get to heaven. And some people say, well, that's so rude. That's so harsh. I'm sorry. The Bible is very clear about this. This is the reason why we have to share this with people. If we really believe there's only one way to get to heaven and we really believe you've got to repent and be baptized and filled with the Spirit to make it home, guess what? We will share the gospel. We will pray more fervently because this really is the only way out. It's a narrow way. And that's, our, that's why we have a purpose. If we don't reach them, I mean, I think most of us in the church, we have some regrets because there were opportunities to speak up. God prompted us and we, were, we stayed quiet. And some of us, at least I have a few times, I have wondered, God, that's, those are the griefs in my life. You just have to hope that God, by God's grace they get another opportunity or that you get another opportunity to speak. Amen. But where there's no revelation, where there's no awareness, where there's no vision, where there's no understanding, where there's no purpose, where there's no clear awareness of God and how God created things. Guess what? There's no restraint. Would you say that our world is living without restraint? Without a recognition that there's boundaries? <laughs> Duh. In fact, our world is to the point where they don't want any boundaries. I can be anything I want to be. Well, let me see you fly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's people. It's a fantasy. Where people are living in a fantasy world. And here I'm just telling you, we need to be very careful of that. Because we can, there is going to be a greater concept in the future. Yes. All these things that we can dream of with our imaginations, a lot of them, especially if they're good things, are going to come true. I honestly believe that someday, if I'm in this galaxy and I want to go to that galaxy, Andromeda, there I am. Why not? Did that blow anybody's mind? I hope not. If I can see it or I can know it, I can go there. Why not? If God's everywhere present, and I'm in Him, and He's in me, and this body is just energy, He can move me from here to there, move my consciousness. Why not? That's awful science fiction. You know what science fiction is? Science fiction is the imagination of man. The Bible says there is, what does the Bible say? The Bible is very clear about this, that we haven't even imagined the things that are in the future. The fantasy world, the, all this stuff. Who knows what we're going to be able to do and be. But that's not now. We're under restraint right now. Because we're trying. God's narrowing our stuff. Just like we don't teach calculus in first grade. Do we, teachers? Why? Because they still don't hardly know one plus one equals two. Right? And that's where we are right now. We're barely at the one plus one stage in this life. Why would God share us things that would literally make us feel like a failure? Our God is good. And so here's the thing. He wants us to. He wants to give us guidelines and commandments and precepts. And this, I love this about David. He says, I love your laws. 
He's a man after God's own heart. What's that mean? He's under, he says, I understand, God, why you love me. You love me enough to say, stay inside the house. Don't walk on the road. Look both ways before you cross the street. Right? So to speak. God says, don't do this and do this. Why? Because we don't understand yet. But what we're learning is that God loves us and that obedience is better than sacrifice. We're learning to follow his way and his will. This is powerful. He wants to give us revelations, but it's based on the revelations we already have. And if we won't learn what God wants to teach us, how in the world can God show us gifts of the Spirit? How in the world can God show us mysteries? How in the world can God show us what's going on in people's lives when we won't even face up to what's going on in our own? If we won't deal with our own issues, why would God tell us about other people's issues? If we won't pray about our own problems, why would God show us what other people's problems are? And God wants to take us to a level of maturity and power. And that I believe that. So that we truly do love God and love people as we love ourselves. Listen to this. People cast off restraint. When people don't see God and people don't fear the Lord and don't understand the principles of God's word and understand the Bible, they do cast off restraint. They don't understand that there's huge consequences for that. And a lot of times, it's not just for them. It's for generations after them. Before those generations after them wake up and go, this is silly. This is crazy. Where is God? There's got to be a God. And I believe in Canada, there actually is a movement among the younger generation to turn back to God. I really do. I really do. There's a lot of people that are tired of this world. They're tired of the junk. They're tired of it being so heartbreakingly broken. The relationship's not, not lasting, and they're looking for answers. They're looking for uh, things that actually work. And I believe that God's way is the way that work. But listen to what it says here. If we cast off restraint, people stop wanting boundaries. It's, it's, it's a sad thing because boundaries are meant to keep us safe. We were talking about this week in our, in our Northeast Christian College class. I'm out of time, man. But we talked about, you know, everybody, nobody wants barriers. And I said, but who wants to leave one of these windows open in the middle of the winter? Some of you were hot today and cold today. Some of you were hot. Some of you were cold. It's, I know how it works. You know, some of you are neither hot nor cold. Oh, man. <laughs> Some of you are neither hot nor cold. Uh -huh. uh, that's a good thing in this case, okay? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sorry for those of you that don't know Revelations. So that's, that's a chapter 3 issue. <laughs> uh -huh. Anyway, uh -huh. so I was talking to the, the students at the Northeast Christian College, and, and we said, well, you know, we're living in a culture that doesn't, you know, we, well, as long as every other area of my life is okay, why not have this one area where it's under my control? Really? You, you guys all know, you don't want to live in a house with a draft. It doesn't take much of an opening in your house to make the whole house cold, does it? You know, close that door. Don't leave the door open. Some of the young ones know exactly what I'm talking about. They're going to find out this winter, right? No. God, close the door. Don't open your window. What are you, what's wrong with you? Right? I mean... There's walls, there's barriers, there's boundaries. And people say, well, I don't want any limitations. Well, then you don't understand the value of boundaries. You don't understand the value of having limitations. Right? There's value in it. That's how you change your atmosphere. That's why it's so important to guard your heart. That's why it's so important to have the Word of God in our heart so we don't sin against God, so that we please God. And so that we will be happy. But listen to this. It says, but happy is he who keeps the law. And then the Lord says, Habakkuk 2.2, 2, as we finish up here. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that they may run who reads it. God wants us to run. I love this passage. We don't have time. But write the vision. You know, there's times in our lives when we need to write down what God tells us. I hope you have a journal. I hope you're writing down what God promises you. You want the, how many of you know that your memory doesn't usually last and that sometimes, you know, when God gives you the vision or gives you the promise, it's so real. It's so powerful. And you want to tell everybody. And then two months later, you're like, what was that about again? Um, or some of us the next day. Anyway, that's just me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what, what was that? Right. We need to write it down. Because if we want to run the race, if we want to go from, from getting it to giving it, we got to have it to share. 
Some of us, I, I think we forget all the blessings, all the times God's healed us, all the time God's done good things. That's why it's good to keep a journal or, or, or something about Thanksgiving. You need something that you can share. This is what God said to me. This is what God did me, so that you can run. Right? There's power in having it written. And so I'm going to pass these. Uh, we're going to have these in the foyer, and I'm going I'm to leave them out there. You don't have to take one. However, I'm going to strongly encourage you to take some time, especially over the next several weeks, if you end up coming to prayer especially, but even if you don't, take one of these personal assessments. Um, I've updated it. I put a lot more in it than we have over the past few years. I recently just put some verses of Scripture. These verses of Scripture that I'm talking about and two or three more are in here. Um, and this one is especially important. I read it as my part of my devotions today, my personal devotions. For which of you intending to build a tower does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it. That, that, the context of that scripture, if you really, you should go look at it. I'm not going to, I don't have time tonight. I can. I can. Uh, you want me to just email this with, with the small group? Um, so, uh, because especially with what we're talking about being good stewards, and we're going to do a stewardship series, and then we're going to do, we're doing also the commitment series. We're going to a ne another level of commitment. Uh, I, you really need to plan. And I, I really felt by the Holy Spirit, because some of you will be wigging out. Can I use that word, wigging out? <laughs> I don't even know what it means, so I need to be careful what I'm saying. <laughs> I think it means going loony. But I don't know, what. It, why did they use the word wig, though? <laughs> See, is that something to do with the earwigs, those little bugs? I don't know. Is it to do with someone losing their wig? I'm sorry. My mind's a little crazy. But it does lead to some interesting humor, doesn't it, Sister Jenny? <laughs> She's like, that pastor's crazy. I don't know about him. He's talking about wigs tonight at church. I don't know. <laughs> he was wigging out tonight at church. <laughs> Amen. Listen, if you don't know your purpose, how are you going to know whether you should do something or not? This is why a lot of young people get messed up. They don't know their purpose yet. They don't know. If you don't know your purpose, then you don't know your value, Kevin. Just saying. If you don't know why God has you on earth, Fritz, it's kind of hard to know your value. And you start wondering why, you know, you kept saying, saying, well, no, I'm not lovable. I'm not this. I'm not that. The enemy can tell you lies and not sweet little lies either. Right? He will try and crush you. He will lie to you. But if you can say, no, God said this, or the word says that, isn't that what Jesus did? You need the word. And I know you guys believe in the word. And you need not only the word, you need Rima word, which is the living word in you, the Holy Spirit prompting you to know these things. Um, this has gifts, knowledge, skills, weakness, strengths. I encourage you to take a look at it. Um, that will help you to know where you fit. And if you have questions about that, it even says it in here. You think it's hard? It's not hard. Ask your spouse. Ask your parents. Ask your friends. They will tell you what you're good at. If you can't figure it out, if you're too shy, you're so humble you can't share your good traits. Uh, just so you know, it's usually pride, not humility, that keeps us from sharing our truth, sharing the truths about ourselves. But we won't go into that tonight. That's a whole nother message. <coughs> well, I have nothing good in my life. Oh, then God made a piece of trash, did he? Well, no. You know. Anyway, we won't go there. You can tell I was a youth pastor for a while, can't you? Because I used to see that all the time. I'm not anybody. Yeah, so then God made nothing? No. Well, I can't say that. Right? So, But I do, want, I do say this. Uh, and there's lifetime goals, five-year goals, immediate goals. This is very, very helpful. But I'm just going to tell you this. This is what I would like you to do this week. This is homework. Studying to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Or you can just be a hearer only. That's your choice. Two things. Okay? Number one, ask God what your mission is. What's my purpose in life? We shared several things here tonight that are true. See if they resonate with you. And try and figure out how that, what that means for your life. How does that look for Maria? How does that look for Joanne? That to love God and love people, or as you were saying, to be in relationship with God. What's that look like for me? Okay? 
And then I want you to think about three things that you want to be to please God. Three things you want to be. That's very simple, isn't it? Mission in life, what God's purpose for my life is, so that I, I know how to, how to live my life in a way that pleases God. And then three things that I want to live for God. Let me just give you an example of that. Okay? And you can do it in three areas if you want, but I'm just going to be very basic. This is, this is some of the things that I do. I want to be a person who is a steward of my body. So, if I'm going to be a steward of my body, that means I need to be healthy. What I eat today. If I don't eat healthy today, then I'm ignoring one of my priorities. It could be eating. It could be exercise. Whatever you want. It could be one of those things. It could be something else. Whatever you can do to be a little healthier, to be a steward of your body. Yeah, this body belongs to God, and I want to I wanna take care of it. I know this is really fundamental stuff, but I encourage you, if you can, just make a goal for yourself. I'm going to go to bed earlier. I'm going to get up earlier. What, whatever. By the way, they, they kind of go together. <laughs> it's, it's like, <laughs> I've seen people, I'm going to start getting up at 5 o'clock. I guess you're going to bed at 10 then, aren't you? <laughs> right? I'm going to get up early to pray. Well, that starts the night before. Boy, when I do, but do this in my class at the Bible college, they all start squirming. <laughs> it's hilarious. And then you start understanding why God said the evening and the morning were the first day and said it over and over as we talked about it in our, we talked about it in our campus ministry, too, uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> it was getting serious. Uh, it's really helpful. Anyway, uh, the other one is, uh, your, how about your soul, which is your thinking and your heart? How are you doing about that? You say, well, I want to be, what does that mean? Well, let me just suggest one. I mean, I could talk about studying the Word of God. That's a great one. How about prayer? I want to be a person of prayer. Does anybody here besides me want to be a person of prayer? Right? They want to say, you want people to say on the day that, you know, they put you in the ground, man, that person prayed. Whenever I asked them, man, I knew they would, they would pray for me. I know they wouldn't just be, you know, something I'd just drop. They would actually pray about it. Right? And I know some of you. Some of y'all may get to preach your funeral. I'll be saying that about you. Or maybe you'll be saying that at my funeral. I don't know. <laughs> Whatever. I hope you believe I'm a man of prayer. I want that to be said about me. You know what? I can't say that if I don't make it a goal to do it every day. I'm not a man of prayer if I don't pray every day. Because all I have is the moment. I only have the day. So I can't be a man of prayer tomorrow. I can only be a man of prayer today. I can only be healthy today. I can't be healthy tomorrow. i got to be healthy today because my life is made up of my days, right? And they are numbered, by the way. They literally are numbered. God knows how many days I have. And then finally, how about, how, so, so how about finally you could talk about spiritually? Are there some gifts of the Spirit? Are some things you want to do through the leading of the Holy Spirit? So we're going to encourage you to do that, okay? Shall we pray? Amen. Sorry, we're keeping them up, I think. Love you, man. I'm glad that Frank is here tonight. I missed him this morning. Amen. Okay, guys, so those, those, those are the two things that God would like us to do. Yes. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, and... And, and this is just, this is extra credit. What she just did is extra credit as far as I'm concerned. Find a scripture that kind of is your theme. Anybody have a theme scripture? I do. I do. One of my theme scriptures was written by my mom when I was just a child, my first Bible. Anybody know Proverbs 3, 5, and 6? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your paths. Wow, that's a powerful purpose. That's a powerful training statement. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Man, if we, just, if we did that, how much better off would we be? And I'm really glad that my mom had, that was my first, I think my first scripture that I probably memorized. I may have cheated and done Jesus wept or something. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Could we stand together tonight? I know this is very practical stuff, but let's be honest. If you're married, you know it's the practical stuff that matters. Right? If you're at the job, it's not because you always feel like it. You do the right thing because it's, it's the right thing to do and because it's, it's how you go forward. Sometimes we talk about, and I feel we felt powerful movement of God here tonight. At least I did. 
And that's awesome. But we also need to be practical. And I think there's practical things that we can do that can be very, very helpful. Because here's the thing. The time is short. The labors are few. And that means we need to be putting it in our heart and mind. I want, and I'm just going to tell you, one of the things that I would like to see us plan over the next few, how are you going to reach someone in the next three months? Let me just tell you, the first step is, is to pray. God, open a door and look at the door. You guys have, you, you guys encouraged me so much tonight because I've been like, oh God, God, <laughs> I'm serious. And I'll probably still will be because I'm, I'm jealous of you guys. I really am. And I'm praying, God, open doors for, your, for me as a pastor to reach someone. I'm ready to leave the 99 if necessary. Go reach that one lost sheep, whatever I got to do. I want to make a difference in my world. Anybody feel that way? I want to get, give, and go. Amen in Jesus' name. Sure. Beautiful. Next time, just stop by the pastor's house. I'd be very grateful. Very grateful. No, I'm kind of grateful that you didn't actually. You didn't come to think of it. I'm, t- I'm trying to be healthy here. But <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'd be twice as grateful. <laughs> it's true. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly right. Yep. That's right. Hey, it's only a week away, so it's a good, good time to practice Thanksgiving. Amen. Can we be thankful to the Lord right now? Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thankful for these incredible people. I am so blessed to serve them and to serve you with them. And God, our world desperately needs people that love. Lord, it desperately needs people that have restraint. People that don't just say whatever they think, Lord, and don't allow themselves to. Lord, do those things which are broken in our world. But Lord, our world needs people, Lord, who are walking in truth, who are living, Lord, loving the law of God and finding happiness. Not in this world, not in what people think about us. There's too much of that going around. And social media doesn't help with it, Lord. We need to be hearing from you, and we need, Lord, to be loving and hearing from those that love us. And Lord, we need to focus on what is good in our life and those things that are noble, right, pure, and lovely. We need to think on these things. We've heard tonight we need to live moment by moment, and we need to be sharing this truth and be looking for opportunities to love people. And, Lord, to help them to remember, even if it's on a napkin, Lord, that we're grateful, that we're a people that are grateful, that we're thankful. And, God, we're so appreciative. Lord, we are a grateful people. And, God, the deeper our gratitude goes, the easier it will be to share the truth of your goodness and your mercy. Now, everywhere we go this week, open the doors. Would you agree with me right now? Would you pray with me? Heavenly Gather, everywhere we go and everywhere I go this week, open doors for me. Lord, to reach someone. Lord, to love someone, to care for someone. Lord Jesus, and if I get a chance, I would like to share the good news. Lord Jesus, that you love us, that our our God is not far from us, and that we don't have some far-off judge waiting to destroy us, but we have a loving Father that's looking for opportunity to bless and to strengthen and to heal and to forgive and bring joy and peace into our lives. Oh, I feel your spirit here. Can we just thank him for his mercy? Thank you, Lord. I know, Lord, I I thank you for your blessings, and I thank you for your goodness. Help us to be intentional. Help us to get a hold of your purpose and our purpose. Lord, as members of the body in particular, whatever calling we have, help us to know it and discover it. And, Lord, so the enemy cannot lie to us, and we can know our value and our worth, and we can share that and tell other people that their value and worth is found in the body of Christ. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. God bless you. And I pray you find strength to do those three things. Amen.